Greetings everyone, this is Mighty Joe. This is video number five of the series on my Mighty Joe's Gripper collection. And I've changed things up a little bit, trying to reduce my workload and the time I have to do things. So here's, here's how it's going to go. Being this is starting the Grip Wall of Fame, I'm going to cut out the tips, the training tips that's uh, I said would be the part of each video. I'm still going to do the training tips, but I'm going to do them on a separate video and just post them on my YouTube channel because it takes up a lot of time and the emphasis on the Grip Wall of Fame is about the individuals and some pieces of equipment. So I kind of want to keep it on that because these individuals deserve full recognition. So let me give you an overall view of the wall and then I'll zoom in on some details and go over what's going to be on video number six. So here's, here's an overall. Let me just slowly go over it. I added quite a few extra or quite a few new pictures. It's all the way down to the floor. Let me get everything covered and then I'll go back and zoom in. I've spent a great deal of time on this wall, mainly a lot of research and gathering pictures and uh, trying to get it just the way I want it. And just so you'll know, this project will probably never end because as I get new stuff, especially pictures that people are still sending in. When I get enough that makes it worth doing another video, I'll update the, the grip wall of fame. Okay, that gives you an idea of the whole thing. Okay, now let's zoom in on some of the stuff I'll be going over on video number six. There's a well-known grip athlete. That's Paul Knight. Everybody knows Richard Soren, a true grip legend. I'll have a lot to say about that individual. Beside him is the grip board founder, Bill Pache, known as One Grip. I'll have a lot to say about him, too. There's Don Larkin. That's a rare picture. Been in grip a very long time, probably as long as anybody. I think he started in the 60s. There's uh, Terry and Jan Todd from the Stark Center Museum, both grip enthusiasts. Uh, I'll have something to say about them too. There's the mighty Adam himself. That painting, that portrait of him was a painting that's uh, displayed in the Stark Museum. Uh, it's just an incredible painting of the mighty Adam. There's David Horn, another grip legend, and I'll have a lot to say about him as well. These are my, this mirror here with these eight grippers on it are my custom made Adam grips. And on the bottom of each handle has Mighty Joe. I'll go over them individually too. Uh, sorry for the... And where it's all going to begin, and rightly so, is with this man right here. That picture right there between the two Iron Man magazines is Warren Tedding when he was 19 years old. That was taken in September of 1953. And I consider him, as many other people in the grip world, the godfather of the heavy-duty torsion spring gripper. <clears throat> that uh, copy right there to the left of his picture is the Iron Man magazine where his first advertisement for his Iron Man grippers come out, which was December of 1964. It's got Larry Scott on the front of it, as you all probably know was the first Mr. Olympia. The Iron Man issue to the right was November of 1977. 
It's got Ron Tufio on the front, and that's when uh, the gripper ad, uh, Perry Rader decided to quit running it because sales was down, and he wanted to free up some advertisement space. These two grippers right here above them three pictures is the one to the left is a retro of the old Iron Man grippers. That one right there to the right is a the first revolving handle gripper Warren made. He only made two or three of these and I'll go more into that later. This picture right here I just recently visited the Stark Museum in Austin, Texas, University of Texas and actually that's two pictures combined right there. Uh, the top shows the two grippers to the left and then the front of the picture is the two grippers themselves. These are the most historically significant torsion spring hand grippers in my opinion on the planet and I'll get into why in video six. There's the Manus Grip Founders. There's a picture of the George Jowett Anvil. That's the original one. That's also at the Stark Center Museum. There's the Lewis Sear Dumbbell. That was donated to the Stark Museum by Eric Weeder. That's Ben Weeder's son. And it was given to Eric uh, by Lewis Sear's grandson himself. So. There's some Hulk hands with a Super Galaxy Tedding Gripper. I thought that was pretty neat. Uh, this guy here cannot by no means be left out of the Grip Wall of Fame. That's Slim the Hammerman Farman, who was a student of the Mighty Atom, which I showed previously right here. Right there. Okay, there's Wade Gillingham. I'll have quite a bit to say about him. There's uh, some DVDs. Jeb Johnson's Crush. David Horn's The Iron Grip. And that book right there is the second edition of Randy Strosen's Captains of Crush Grippers. Randy didn't really want a picture of himself on the wall. He said he was too ugly. I know he was kidding, but he signed that book right there. And he's also an individual that uh, plays a huge role in grippers today. And I'll have a lot to say about him as well. There's an old Whiteley torsion spring hand gripper. There's one of the original. That's an ad for a Whiteley grip machine. Uh, that's really old. That's in the 20s. There's a more modern Whiteley gripper. That one's from the late 50s. Uh, there's Andrew Derniot, as we all know. There's Jed Johnson. I'll have quite a bit to say about him as well and what he's done for grip. There's a picture of Tim Struess, who climbed all the way up to the Mash Monster 7 when that was the highest one there was. Here's somebody you may or may not be familiar with. Uh, that's Rob Vengeant. When the grip board originally started and then uh, Bill come up with the MASH Monster certification, there was only three grippers. And Rob Vengeant right there was the first one to close all three of them and did it relatively fast too. Incredibly strong guy. Here's Eric Milfeld. Here's something I'm probably the most proud of. Many people can't say. There's my first torsion spring hand grippers when I was a kid. My dad bought these like in 68 or 69. I was born in 62 and little did he know when he bought them. He bought them second hand but uh, I'll get into this later but there's a way to tell on the box that Voight made what year them grippers was produced. Well, it just so happens them come from 1962. There's a picture in like 1990 uh, of my arm wrestling machine. But what's significant about this picture is if you'll notice, there's some grippers on the arm wrestling machine and on the floor. And one of them is the old, the black one to the right.